been depressed, that's why you've been murmuring and complaining, that's why you have no hope, that's why, because you've been looking at the wrong thing. Amen. And so he told Joshua, because how, you know, fitting do you think it was the children of Israel to go through all this, to cross Jordan, to see the miraculous things that God is about to do in their life, only to get to a big old wall. That they could see no way. That they was going to be able to. The Bible says it was straightly shut up. It was shut down. None can go in and none can come out. So they knew the promise of God. But they got to a place of an impossibility. And Joshua. We told Joshua to tell them. Don't look at that wall. He said I need you to see beyond that wall. I need you to envision. What I promised you. I told you it's a land flowing with milk and honey. I told you that it was a land of prosperity. It's a land of promise. He said look beyond that. Hebrews chapter number 11, verse number 3 says, Through faith we understand that the world was framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of the things which do appear. Right? The things which were seen did not, were not made by the things which do appear. What does that mean? That means the things that is in your life that you believe God is going to do in your life are not there yet. they only there because God spoke it. But the Bible says that God upholds all things by the word of his power. When you read through Genesis, everything God said, it became. That's the reason why he told Abraham, I am a God that calls those things which be not as though they were. What is he saying? I am a God that can call the thing that don't look like it's supposed to happen and I can bring it into existence by what I said. Now that is the promise of God. So whatever God is promising you in your life, Whatever he's promising you in the promised land, God says it's already done. Why? Because I've already spoken it. Yeah. And, and, and you may not see it in the natural right now, but if you would look by faith and, and envision, get my vision, get what I've told you. If you would look by faith, don't walk by what you see, but walk by what I've said. And God says if you can get a hold on what I have said, then he says you will have what you see. Right? Because now your speech changes and, and everything changes because you know God is going to do this thing in my life. The fact of the matter is you cannot enter to the promised land if you don't see it. And you have to begin to see what God is going to do in your life. So he told Joshua, he says, lift up your eyes. See with your spiritual eye. Don't see with your natural eye. You see, and you have to understand, for your life, I see some things. I see you healed. I see you delivered. I see you walking. In Somebody ain't talking to me this morning. I said, I see you. Regardless of where you are, that's the reason why people say, Pastor, how can you have so much patience and so much love with folk? Why? Because I, see, I don't see you as you are today. I, I see you where you're going. I see the God that is in you. I see the purpose that is in you. So even though you may be stumbling and reaching your Jericho and reaching those things today, but I believe the vision that God has given me concerning you. That's why I'm your cheerleader telling you, go ahead, go ahead, it's your birthday, come on, you can do it. That's the reason why no matter what, I'm always cheering you on because I know what God has in you. I truly walk by faith and not by sight. I truly do not allow these temporary things that you're doing hinder the vision that God has for me for your life. Do you know God gives me a vision for all of you? Vision. Let's look at this for a moment. Vision. We says that to see is to envision. Is to envision um, um, what God is doing in the spiritual realm and not focusing on what's going on in the natural. Now, let's look at this word vision because it, it is very interesting. Vision means uh, an oracle or prophecy or divine communication. Right? When, when you talk about a vision from God. If you haven't communicated with God about what you see, you're just dreaming. Because vision only comes from God. Vision is a divine communication. Now how he communicates to you, he do it through us different ways. Some of us do get dreams. It's a divine dream. Some of us do have people, prophets, that prophesy over our life, that confirm what God has in our spirit. But what vision simply means, it is a divine communication of what God is saying concerning you. Do you understand that even before the foundations of the world, that God knew you? The God of gods and the King of kings knew you. He's Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. When, when, when God put you in his mind, he already had 
thoughts of good and success for you. He had a purpose for you. God says there's nothing that I've created I did not create it without a purpose. So when you think about God and you think about why am I here on this earth? How did all this thing work? You was conceived in the thoughts of God before you was ever conceived naturally. That's the reason why we are all uniquely put together. We all have different things but God is the one that orchestrated all that to bring us to a purpose. Now you have to catch this. He's the one that orchestrated all that to bring us to a purpose. God has a purpose for each and every one of our lives. And you can never find your purpose until you go to the creator or the manufacturer or the one that put you in his thoughts to find out what you're supposed to be doing. Because I don't know about you, before I came to Christ, I, man, my mind was all messed up. I didn't know what I was made for. I tried everything. I guess I'm going to be by myself this morning. I said, I tried everything. Hallelujah. You're doing all kinds of stuff. Because I didn't, and then all of that stuff I've done, I was never fulfilled. I, was, I never had fulfillment in my life. I never had status, no matter how much money I had. I had the money. I had the businesses. I had all the things that the world told me that I need to be happy. But something was still missing deep down inside of me but when I found the Lord and I began to lean upon him he gave me purpose now I'm excited about waking up in the morning now I'm excited about going through my day now I have the energy that is in me why because he's given me a purpose and with that purpose he gave me vision our God is awesome that way he not only shows you his purpose but he also gives you a vision now you cannot get vision until you commit it to purpose God would not get, what did God, what, why would he tell you? If you haven't committed to purpose. So God would not give you vision until you commit to purpose. Once you commit to purpose, once you say, God, here I am. All my mess. I'm standing before you in all my mess and all my dirt. And I need you right now to take control of my mind and take control of my heart. Right now, I don't know how I got here, but I'm here. I stepped on some people, I lied, I cheated, I stole, I was an alcoholic, I, but I'm here right now. And right now, God, I'm surrendering to your will. I'm asking you to take control of my mind, take control of my heart, and use me for your glory. That's committing to purpose. Do you understand that? That's committing to purpose. Once you commit to purpose, somewhere, God gives you vision. Because he wants you to see where you're going. Now, now, this is the interesting thing. When God gives you vision, he gives you a glimpse of it. And it's where you're going. He don't show you what it's going to take to get there. Huh? He don't show you what it takes to get there. Why? Because vision breeds hope. Right? Because I have vision and I have hope, I can go through any storm and any tribulation. I can go through anything. Why? Because I know God showed me I'm going to get there. So whatever river I have to cross, whatever mountain I have to climb, whatever valley I have to go through, guess what? God, you're God that you cannot lie. You showed me I'm going to be there. And because you showed me my faith is there, I'm going to get there. That's the reason why when he told the disciples, go over to the other side. They got into the boat. They went over to the other side. His, his promise was, go over to the other side. But when they got in the midst of the sea, the storm came. It was a hurricane. The, the ship began to get beat up. And Jesus, they began to cry out for fear. And the Bible says Jesus began to walk on the water, coming to him. He was like, oh, my children, they out there crying. Why ain't they trusting what I said? If I said you get to the other side, you get to the other side. Because he a God that he cannot lie. If he said it, he shall perform it. And so he told them, you're going to go to the other side. But the Bible says they begin to cry out for fear. And he says when Jesus got to him, he says, oh ye of little faith. How in the world do you think this storm is bigger than me? He says, I'm going to show you it's not. Peace be still. And the hurricane stopped. He says, listen, you need to understand that when I decree that you're going somewhere, it's going to happen. Amen. And so God is beginning uh, to let us know that what he's promised you in the promised land is going to happen. But you have to vision what God has said. And you have to hold on to that because that allows you to continue the things of God. Vision is also a mental uh, image produced by imaginations. 
Imagination is very strong, guys. Imagination is very strong. Your vision. What are you imagining?